Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll take two important examples of this phylum Cylindrata and we'll try to see how uh, the, the structure is and how they reproduce because general uh, characteristics we have already talked about. So one example is Hydra. The animal Hydra has vast like body. It has cylindrical body and they are sessile. They normally remain attached to a substratum with the help of a basal part of their body. So now there is a cavity which we have already talked of. It is known as cylindron. And there is this long vast like body. So this cavity is there. And this mouth which is there, we normally when we draw a section, this is how we draw. But mouth is not like this. There is a cone like structure. So here on the upper part, there is a conical thing which protrudes like this. And the, this is called the hypostome. The mouth is slightly on the lower side. There is a cone-like structure which covers this mouth. And then there are tentacles which arise from here. So from this part, we would also find the tentacles which are arising. And these tentacles, they have those stinging cells with that stinging organ that is nematocyst. So here they normally remain attached. Hydra is a fresh water cylindrate. Cylindrates are marine but Hydra is fresh water cylindrate and it is sessile. The other important thing is normally it remains attached to a substratum but it can show locomotion and locomotion is of different types. So here we can write that it can locomote. Locomotion can be, as I said, of different types. For, for example, if this hydra remains attached to a substratum like this, and if it has to move from that place, then there are multiple options. Like if this is the body of hydra, it is going to bend. It touches the substratum with the help of its tentacles, make it upside down and can start crawling with the help of tentacles upside down. This is one method. The second is from the basal plate, it can produce an air bubble, which will detach it from that substratum. It is going to float for some time. And then again, when it comes to suitable substratum, it attaches there. Another one is summer storm. Again, the body is like this. It becomes bent, it becomes inverted. And then the back portion is going to turn like this. So it is going to take a somersault. Or it can also move by the same thing. It goes like this, attaches with the tentacles, lifts the lower part, again moves it like this, again becomes straight, again goes like this. So this is also one movement. So there are various ways in which this hydra can locomote. In case of hydra, we have seen that they are Carnivores and holozoic. They are carnivores and holozoic. The digestion is intra as well as extracellular. So intra and extracellular digestion both are seen. In case of hydra, reproduction is also of two types. That is asexual as well as sexual. So asexual reproduction is by formation of exogenous bud. These buds, they are tiny structures which arise. So initially, if we see a young bud, it is going to be just a bulbous uh, outgrowth which is seen. When it grows, then it is going to resemble the parent body except for the size. So this is a full grown bud. It is going to detach from the parent body when it attains a size and functional capability. So it detaches and then it will also get attached to the substratum and will lead its individual life. So this is called exogenous bud. Sexual reproduction is also very common and hydra 
can be unisexual or bisexual also. That means there can be only hydra having testes or hydra having only ovaries or it can be hydra having both the sex organs. That means they can be hermaphrodite. If they have both the sex organs, then the testes, they are triangular structures and they are present on the upper part of the body and the ovaries are slightly spherical structures which are present on the lower side of the body. So these are the testes and here would be the ovary. So they may have both the sex organs but if it is like only having one sex organ again testes would be on the upper part and ovaries are going to be on the lower side. In case of hydra we find only polyp form. That means this type of body. We have seen when we were talking about the general characters that they show polyp form as well as medusa form. So hydra is one example where only polyp is seen. We will take some examples where there are polyps and medusa both which are seen in their life cycle. The other example that we are talking of is Aurelia which is commonly known as jellyfish. They have umbrella like body that means it is a medusa form and in them medusa is the predominant form. In case of Aurelia the body is umbrella like they are free floating free floating and they also have tentacles but those tentacles are in a different arrangement. The body is umbrella like so this is how the body is and again this is the area where there is going to be mouth. So if this is the body the mouth is going to be here and mouth is surrounded by four arms. So here there would be four arms which are going to arise and because of this these are called the oral arms. The reason why they are called oral arms because they surround the mouth. Now where are these tentacles? The tentacles are present all around this peripheral part. That means here we would find all these structures which are the tentacles. And these tentacles are going to have the stinging cells that is the nematocyst or the nidoblast. Now one more very important thing is their locomotion. It is called hydropulsation. So because of this umbrella like body it fills the body with water and then ejects this water with force. So when it ejects it, that water then body moves up. So it is called hydropropulsion. One more important thing is that body is more or less transparent. It is very very light mucous membrane type body that they have and because of that transparent structure many internal organs are also visible from outside. In case of them, the gonads, they are four in number and these gonads are horseshoe shaped. So this is one gonad which is visible here. This is the other one and one half of this is on the other side and this is the third one. So from the top, if we see, we can see all four gonads which are on the uh, bulging part of this umbrella like body. Jellyfishes they normally come on the seashore and their toxins are also very harmful not only to the animals but also to human beings and because they look like very flexible uh, having flexible body that's why they're commonly known as jellyfishes. Medusa is the predominant uh, face which they have whereas in case of Hydra we find only polyp form. So these are two important examples. In the other video we will talk about few more important examples.